our breath. We're not going to hold our breath. Uh, no. But but in the in the meantime, we are going to talk about a, a few films, uh, including this uh, Indiana Jones uh, time travel film, Indiana Jones and the Time Travel Device of Yesteryear. I think <laughs> is the uh, unofficial title. And that was changed, I think, to Indiana Jones and what the Dial of Destiny is. That yeah, was the changed official? to the eleventh hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they never listen to Noel. They never listen to Noel. It's their detriment. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Well, this is a film that that I've been waiting for for, for quite a while. Um, mm-hmm. I especially when I heard who was attached to it from a director standpoint. I, I like uh, James Mangold and the work he's done and. I've been fortunate enough to spend some time talking to a couple of cinematographers that have worked with him um, and worked on this film. And I remember talking to them while they were working on it, and they couldn't give me the inside scoop, but they could say, hey, I'm working on the new indie film. And so uh, I was really looking forward to to this on a lot of different levels. I I grew up um, loving uh, the franchise and really appreciating just the action adventure aspect of this popcorn flick that that really kind of seems to make summer or summer's past. So high expectations for this. Let, let me get your uh, expectations before we, we talk a, about this particular film. Right. I'm right there with you. Um, I, I'm on record as saying many times that we don't get adventure movies like we used to. We get a lot of action movies these days. And, you know, the action movies also kind of been replaced by comic book movies, but we don't get a whole lot of good swashbuckling adventures. I think that's why Pirates of the Caribbean was so popular, because there wasn't really anything in that place. Uh, for me, Raiders of the Lost Ark is one of the most perfect movies ever made. Uh, I, I absolutely love it, adore it. I love Indiana Jones as a character um, and just watching those movies. So I was right there with you as far as like so excited to see a new indie. We know going in that this is his farewell journey, so you know there's going to be some emotion involved and all that. Um, I was I was very hyped to see this movie. Yeah, and, and you talk about Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, particularly released in 81, uh, and uh, still today a perfect film. Uh, all these years later, it's still just an amazingly perfect film, and uh, you had a lot to live up to. Uh, and and we've, ha- we've had uh, four of these films now. We, we thought several years ago when Sean Connery was in Last Crusade, we honestly thought that was the last time we would see Indiana Jones, but came back with the Crystal Skull. Uh, and, and we do know for sure, yeah, this is the last time. Uh, well, what's the story? Uh, well, the story, there is a device that can allow, or we think will allow you to go back in time and you can make changes. Nazis are involved. They, they of course, uh, want to change uh, change the past so they can change history and change the future. Um, there are puzzles. There's mysteries. Uh, there are uh, chase scenes. There are fight scenes. There are more chase scenes. And <laughs> there is there is a lot of action. Um, and, 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 and Indy is really kind of this grumpy, aging professor that really doesn't seem like he cares about life anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, which uh, the, the spark that we had seen in him previously is not there. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a whole lot of Harrison Ford in this movie, it seems like. Uh, he, he's, he's taken his, his grumpy man act and really just transferred it to Indiana Jones. But, you know, given with the backstory we hear throughout the movie, what he's kind of been through since we last saw him. Some of that a little bit justified, but it is also kind of disheartening to see that, that, that lack of, of, for, you know, the old Indiana Jones, for lack of a better phrase. It is disheartening to not really see that. Yeah. And and that's one of the words that just kind of kept coming back to me throughout. I was kind of disheartened by, by this film. Uh, It, it had, all the things that we, you would probably expect if you're going to doing, be, be doing the check boxes and the mm-hmm. formula for what you would find in an Indiana Jones film. But it felt like it truly was, for me, uh, in many ways, just on autopilot. And I, I, I didn't feel that fulfillment um, and that um, just that, that joy when I left the theater that I had in the past. And while I, I'm, all Indiana Jones films... Are, are not up to the same level. I will say that right off the bat. But with each of them, I've been able to come out and say, "Wow, I, I, I still felt good with what what I saw and and the experience I had." 
And this is one of those films, Daryl, that uh, it, it's been a long time since I've come out of a film and, and had this kind of uncertain uh, angst of, of emotions of I don't really know what I'm feeling. And, it, and mm-hmm. it's taking me some time to digest it. And there's another film we'll talk about a little later that I've kind of felt the same way about in, in certain aspects. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I'm the same way. I have my review written and it's on ice right now and I keep coming back to it and I'm like I'm I'm not sure if what my review has directly correlates to how I feel I've gone back to it a couple times and sometimes I'm like yeah this kind of sums it up and sometimes I'm like yeah I don't know and it's it's just, I, I haven't felt this way I don't think since The Last Jedi really I just came out so uncertain as to what it was I saw and couldn't quite nail down how I felt it, it starts off on a high note. I really like the opening action sequence that we get, but then there's some choices made in that third act with Indiana Jones that just do not sit well with me at all and kind of taint him as a character. Um, you would think the, per- the person we know that is a, a, a we assume, tenured professor right. would be smarter than that in, in the decision yeah. that he's, he's wanting to make towards the end there. But, but yeah, it's 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 weird. I, I got it right above Crystal Skull, uh, below Temple of Doom in my rankings, but <laughs> still still iffy on it. It's it's going to take maybe one more watch for me to try to nail down. Yeah, I, I loved the opening sequence you mentioned. Uh, there was the de aging that took place, and uh, they are becoming uh, they are they are honestly starting to perfect that in, in a lot of ways. Uh, and we know what a young Harrison Ford looked like. Mm-hmm. So to to see that, uh, you know, I kind of got lost in those first 12 minutes of going, wow, this is pretty dang cool seeing this younger Indiana Jones with this kind of flashback uh, sequence. And um, I appreciated that. I, you know, the, the villain, um, Mads Mikkelsen, who um, you know I've enjoyed uh, in so many things uh, throughout uh, his career, you know, once again, br- bringing a Nazi in and... Uh, how many times can you have the Nazis show up and, and Indiana, Indiana Jones has to find a way to take them down? Um, I really did enjoy um, the, uh, the the new sidekick who was the goddaughter in this. I appreciated her, her uh, banter a bit. The standout for me in this movie, I think, is, is Phoebe Waller-Bridge. When they announced her attachment to the movie, I me being a big fan of her show Fleabag, I was I was right there with it. I was like, yes, give this to me. And that that aspect of the movie did not disappoint whatsoever. I, I think she's she, you know she got a little bit of action chops in her own right. It's a little bit of that uh, that new school brushing up against the old school, different thoughts, different ideologies. Uh, and it was interesting to see their chemistry and how they played off of each other. But yeah, coming out of me, the one thing I was sure of was Phoebe yeah. Bridge. Yeah, and and she had a she had a sidekick as well, which was honestly a throwback to Temple of Doom, uh, mm-hmm. and, and I think that was one of the things I, I felt they were um, forcing these uh, fan service moments throughout the film, just to say, oh, okay, that's a nod to this one, that's a nod mm-hmm. to that one, and it just it for me it didn't feel organic, it yeah. didn't feel authentic, it felt like okay, we've got to shoehorn this in just so people will say, oh, yeah, I see what you're doing there. Um, I, I, I really, uh, when I review films, if it's something I really love or think is, is, is relatively good, <laughs> I can explain why and talk about why. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's really bad, <laughs> the same way. But it's these films that, that hit me kind of in the middle yep. that I find, to, I find the most difficult because I did not hate this film. I did not love this film. There are aspects of it that I thought were incredibly solid. The technical achievements were there. Uh, but when I look at the, the action sequences and the chase sequences and those kinds of things, Daryl, it, it didn't surpass anything that I saw 40 years ago in, in the first Raiders of the Lost Ark. So to me, if you're going to further this and utilize that adventure aspect, mm-hmm. take it up. Take it up a notch. Find ways to bring it up a notch. And and they just did not do that for me. And incredibly disappointed in that aspect of it. Uh, my bride, Beth, uh, we, we talked about it as we left. And, and these are her quotes. She said she didn't feel like there was spark or heart in this particular film. And I said, mm-hmm. really, you, you, you kind of nailed it. That's 
what was kind of missing, and that's why it, it hurts yeah. to say this about uh, a character that I love so much. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a good surface level Indiana Jones, uh, but if you want to get into really who he is and what what those movies are about, it's it's not the best in that aspect. Yeah. Mickelson always makes for a great villain. Uh, here, right. I thought he was okay. He was serviceable. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any final thoughts or comments you want to make sure you share before we give a rating for uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? Uh, worth checking out at least once in theaters because it's going to be the last time you see an Indiana Jones movie in theaters. After that, man, I think it's it'll be a great Saturday afternoon movie. Yeah, I agree. So what is your rating? Remember, we do the uh, A to F report card rating. I think I'm going to give it a... Oh, man. I always forget that you got these ratings. I'm going to go with this <laughs> solid... C plus. You know, I'm right there with you, uh, right on that C plus. Uh, when we were riding home from it, Beth said, "You know, I'm kind of at that B minus." And then the next day, she, the more I think about it, she said, "Honestly, a C plus." I'm like, Beth, yes, I'm with you. <laughs> um, and it just it hurts me to say that. It really hurts me to 